The report from EMS was that the patient was fine just one hour ago. Now they look like they're gonna die. Sats in the 70s, working very hard to breathe, drowning in pulmonary edema, crackles everywhere, blood pressure above 200. This is sympathetic, crashing acute pulmonary edema or scape. The question is, are you using the right dose of nitroglycerin? Because I think most people probably aren't. In this video, we're going to cover a recent RCT that helps clarify this issue. Welcome to First 10 EM. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the First 10 EM YouTube channel. Let's jump right in. Most people in medicine, I think, have been dramatically underdosing nitroglycerin. In residency, I was taught that you start a nitro grip at something like 10 micrograms a minute. 50 micrograms a minute was considered very high dose. This was actually the topic that got me interested in FOMED. This was the very first MCRIT post. Scott, congrats on doing this for 15 years, buddy. That's one heck of an achievement. But I remember listening to that podcast and having this cognitive dissonance. Some a-hole on the internet was saying things that made a lot of sense, but it contradicted with what I was being taught in residency, what was written in the guidelines at the times. And it was those contradictions that really drove me to write down my own approaches to resuscitation, and that is what became First 10 EM. Now, since I was in residency, this practice has changed somewhat. I think people are more comfortable using higher or appropriate dose nitroglycerin. There's been some observational data. We've talked about this a little bit in our uh, Broom Docs podcast with uh, Casey Parker. Personally, I have been using a lot higher doses. But this year was the first time we had an RCT on the topic. Now it's an open label, single center RCT. It's small, there's only 52 patients, but despite that, it is our best data on the topic because it's our only RCT. They enrolled sick, scape patients. You had to have hypoxia, hy hypertension, respiratory distress, and then they randomized them to either high or low dose nitroglycerin. Now high dose was an IV bolus between 600 and 1000 micrograms, followed by an infusion that started at 100 micrograms a minute. That was compared with what's probably considered usual care in most places, and that's an infusion starting at like 20 or 40 micrograms a minute with no bolus at all. Now we started all patients in both groups on BiPAP, which makes a lot of sense. And then the headline news here, the results were dramatically better with high dose nitroglycerin. Resolution of symptoms at six hours was 65% versus 12%. That's a 53% absolute risk reduction. That's a number needed to treat very close to two. Unheard of. Intubation was 19% versus 4%. Another big absolute difference. Everything was better. Admission rate, length of stay, major adverse cardiac events, everything. In terms of safety, there was no hypotension in either group. There were some headaches, but actually there were a few more of those in the low dose group. So overall, this looks incredible. Although with small, single center, unblinded trials, you always have to worry about the too good to be true phenomenon. So let's talk about some limitations. Again, let's say it again. This is a small, single center, unblinded trial. It's the best evidence to date, but that doesn't mean that it's incredibly strong evidence. Unblinded trials always worry me. Now, most of the outcomes we're looking at here seem pretty objective, but even objective outcomes can be biased. Everybody in emergency medicine has, for example, run a blood pressure and thought to themselves, eh, that doesn't seem right, and so you just run it again. And then you only write down the number that fits with what you expected. And in an unblinded trial, those really small differences can end up adding up and making huge differences in the reported outcomes. And even the way we talk to patients. I can imagine a doctor in this trial saying something like, Wow, you've been on the highest dose for a few hours now. You must be feeling better, right? How you phrase questions really matters. The other big nuance with this study, I think, is generalizability. These patients don't look a lot like my patients. These patients are really young. The mean age in this trial was in the mid-40s. For a sick pulmonary edema patient, that's young. Despite being really young, though, 
70% have chronic renal failure, 100% basically had baseline hypertension. And on top of that, it's somewhat remarkable to me that so few of these patients felt better by six hours. Even in the high dose group, it was only 65%, but I'll tell you in my practice, the combination of nitroglycerin and BiPAP cures all of these patients by two or three hours almost every time. 19% of the control group was intubated. I'll tell you in my career, I've never once intubated a SCAPE patient. So the patients and maybe just the standard practices at the hospital where this trial were, was run seem to be different than what I'm used to and therefore the results may not generalize. Maybe this is why people have gotten away with such small doses of nitroglycerin for all these years in North America. Maybe our patients just aren't that sick. So as a single study, look, this is just not completely convincing. Single center, unblinded, not very big, but a huge part of evidence-based medicine is considering pretest probability and how does this fit with all of the science? And there was already a fair amount of evidence that showed good outcomes with high dose nitroglycerin. So for example, Wilson 2016, I'll try to link all of these in the show notes, but Wilson 2016, they were giving two milligram or 2000 microgram IV push doses and those high doses were associ associated with a lower rate of ICU use and the hypotension rate was only 2%. Matthew 2021 published a cohort of 25 patients who received IV boluses between 600 and 1,000 micrograms with no complications. Hausman 2023 described a cohort of 67 patients with IV infusions that are all started at 100 or higher micrograms per minute. And there was a 4% rate of hypotension. Uh, but given that most hypotension is short-lived and you can fix it by just turning down the infusion, that seems pretty safe. So despite being only a single, small, unblinded RCT, this new paper is the best study we have, and it meshes really nicely with all of the available data. So I think this paper is practice changing if you're currently using lower dose nitroglycerin. If like me, you've been listening to Scott on MGRIT for the last 15 years, this might be more practice affirming. Practically speaking, I'll tell you, I still often do the bolus part sublingually. And that's just because it takes nurses time to actually grab IV medications, whereas the sublingual dose is just right there in every room that I work in. And it gives me something to do while the nurse is getting the IV drip set up and the RT is getting the BiPAP ready. Don't forget, BiPAP is the other essential ingredient here. So what I do is I usually just spray two or three sprays, so eight to 1200 micrograms under the tongue before putting that BiPAP mask on. And because I've already given essentially a bolus, I just start with an infusion. And I started 100 micrograms a minute, but I'm ready to titrate as I need to. If the IV was right there, based on this data, I would be very happy to give an IV bolus, probably somewhere in the range of 500 to 1,000 micrograms as a bolus. And I would start with that same 100 micrograms a minute infusion. But I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you disagree? Do you have other tips for managing these very sick patients? Leave your comments below. I'd love to have a discussion about this. For this time, that's all for now. Now, this was just the second video on this channel. So as of the time that I'm recording this, like basically nobody knows that these videos even exist. So if you enjoy this content, if you wanna see more, I'm gonna ask you a huge favor. Please hit that like button, subscribe, share this on if you use Twitter, Facebook, whatever social media you're using these days. Even though everybody asks for that stuff, it makes a much bigger difference for the small channels that are just getting started because YouTube right now has no idea if my content's any good. No idea whether they should show it to other people. So your one like could have a dramatic impact on the success of this channel and I really appreciate it. That's it for now. Until next time, take care.